Good morning. Um, or as we learned this morning from the fantastic start of this Nordic Edge know-how uh, show, GM. Um, Sher? Is that how it's, it's pronounced? Great. Okay. You told us to, to stop trying being like you, but uh, I'm just having a good time. Hashtag in Stavanger. <laughs> Smiley. Okay. Well, um, first and foremost, thank you for inviting us. The Danes are here. <laughs> um, <laughs> the land of cheap beer and good hot dogs. And we've been to the U.S. and France already. And um, I'm just, I just want to start out with saying I'm very pleased to be here again this year. Um, I'm traveling with some of my good colleagues from University College in Copenhagen, Future Classroom Lab. My name is Tobias Heiberg, not Thomas Heiberg. So what, I, uh, what I've been asked to do is to try to reflect upon what we've heard, what we've heard this morning. Uh, and thank you, guys, for some great and very inspirational talks. I'm using this very new technology called paper. I've been scribbling, so I'll try and do my best to kind of reflect on what's been said so far. And I'll start with what uh, Jan Torresana told us, the minister, and I guess he left us, in my perspective, with a challenge, something that we needed to, to take very seriously. And what I heard is, uh, to me, very, very elegant. It's an ambition to create a school where every child can develop its talents. It's a school where we can pre prepare everyone to become active, to take part in, in society, and that is what it's all about, I guess. That's also what Danish schools are, are about. It's also what Norwegian schools and Swedish schools and so forth is, is all about. And I guess that Nordic tradition is, is very strong, and I guess we have to, to, to build upon that culture um, when we change. Today, I'm also going to be very critical about what we do. Because as I am doing right now, I think we talk a lot, and I want to see more good, profound examples of people doing something about it, with respect, of course, of the very refined culture that we have for education here. But what I also heard is, and that's a strong point, and I also heard that with, uh, with the people before me, speaking before me, is that the machine is not a magic thing that can just save the educational system. And that's a good perspective from, from a minister, I think. It has to be connected with strong teaching skills. And of course, one might add, it might also be connected with, with, with what I would call respectful disruption of the educational system. I think that what you're doing now here in Norway is trying to renew the subject curricula. And I think that's important and that's very, very necessary and to think tech in not as a, as a thing that has to control what we're doing in the educational system, but of course as a tool to uh, get to the, the, the overall ambition. So the ambition is very brave, I think, and you're doing something about it. But I think that one of the problems in being a politician, and he left us with that note, is that you can change it locally. So what is the task at hand is to try and change it on an everyday basis. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And I think that's what we see with old school. That's what we see with 42. And I hope and I know there are a lot of examples here in Norway also represented in, in this room right now. So I just need to go to the next slide. Wrong clicker, this one. OK. This picture, of course, to me, it's overdramatic, no question about it. But still, this is what we're trying to change, I guess. I'm sure this never happens in Norway, but sometimes, when we look into the classrooms, in Danish schools, in Danish teacher education, at the universities, at the university colleges, higher education, we still see this. And then what we add, might be one-to-one -one technologies, but still building upon this type of educational culture. I think what we need to remember is school is not given as an institution looking like that. It's all about a learning perspective that can be much different than what we see here. 
And what I personally take away from old school and from 42 is the brave ambition to, to handle that challenge and try and changing it on an everyday basis. That's very interesting to me. That's very inspiring. I think we all know the context. <laughs> For years, we've been arguing, we've been talking about we need a more holistic set of skills. Still valuing, of course, the academic skill, the traditional skills. But we need to focus maybe more on communication, collaboration, creativity. You know what I'm talking about. In Danish schools, in Danish higher education, we actually have a huge problem with motivation. What's that all about? They're sitting there all day, 7-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 27-year-olds. They come at 8 in the morning, they leave at 3. You can have some school days just sitting there. Is that OK? Is that OK in 2018? Of course you lack in engagement and motivation when that's what you're met with. And when we're talking about democracy in the Nordic countries, I think we as adults would try, we have to test the system. Would we agree to be part of that system ourselves? I'm not sure I would. So maybe we have to discuss a whole system change. New challenges it needs, and we know what the challenges are. I've just mentioned a few. We know what the needs are. The minister mentioned some of the ambitions for it. So what we are working with, and what Old School and 42 are great examples of, is trying to create new learning cultures, but with great respect and understanding for existing cultures. And that's what this is all about. It's taking these inspirations that we get from other school systems and try to integrate them into the formal institutions in our countries. Not as something beside the culture, but from inside the culture, with respect for the culture. There is the challenge that we enjoy, I guess, the reproduction of ourselves and well-known culture. And in this, we find an indirect risk of not being aware of the necessary actions to refine and cultivate the educational system. And then what we do in Denmark, at least, then we say, in the future, and we're also called Future Classroom Lab, Jesus, but it's a EU project. We didn't pick the name ourselves. But still, <laughs> it's not in the distant future. And that's the point here. We have to do something about this now. Because or else we're just promoting mindsets of tomorrow, talking about them. But we are reproducing a school system of yesterday. So what I see when I listen to uh, 42 and all school, I see them daring to change the role of the teacher. 42 alienated the teacher, or uh, uh, de destroyed, deleted the, the, the teacher. That's very brave. Very brave move. I see much more flexible, much more flexibility towards student needs and potentials. I see very learner-centric uh, approach from a tech vendor creating a platform. And I see very well-structured synergies between analog and digital. So when all schools do their lab schools, that's a great example, because then you can actually see the platform in action with kids in the educational uh, structures and cultures. And I see a great willingness to create something new to start over. I guess one of the questions I have and I keep asking myself is, is creativity, technological literacy, and playful learning, for example, is that the answer? The only answer? I think not. I think that some of the traditions that we have here in the Nordic countries, we should really regard them as very valuable, also in the way that we work with children's academic skills and so forth. But we need to create better links with some of these things, and of course with technological literacy as we are discussing today. And I think that if we are aiming for new targets, and in this case, for example, creativity and technological literacy, we have to adjust the methods and the environments for learning and child development. So what do we do? And by we, I mean me, my colleagues, Future Classroom Lab, and also the schools that we work with and the municipalities that we work with in Denmark. 
Yeah, we try our best to do something. And I would never stand up here and say that we have all the answers. Not at all. We're in constant beta mode, trying to learn from like old school, 42, people here at the Nordic Edge. So I'm just going to show you some pictures of what it looks like to us when we try to build uh, another type of learning environment. This is an everyday situation at our campus in Copenhagen. And of course, it's called Campus Carlsberg. <laughs> so could it look like that? Could, it, could this be the school of 2018? And the great thing is, and we're getting more and more clear skies because we see more and more of this in the Danish schools. And that's a very, very good thing to see. This is our teacher education. Because I think one of the very important things in the way, the, the way that we work is also to show the teachers of tomorrow much more profound examples of what we are talking about when we're talking about new educational environments. So could we create another type of teacher education? Because research show us that the teachers of tomorrow are teaching basically as boring as we teach them. Could it look like that? Could this be the role of the teacher? That's one of my students, that's Yannick. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be very happy I showed this picture of him. <laughs> Let us stay in this room, please. Could this be the classroom of tomorrow? We have great success so far, and we're trying to do this in a national scale. This is just starting. We're trying to take the Future Classroom Lab idea and spread it all over our small country. That's a good thing by living in Denmark, is that it's a very small country, so we can spread pretty easily. So we take every university college in Denmark, and we try to build these environments. And it's not just a museum or a showroom where you can come and visit for one day and have a great day and go back to your school or whatever. We're trying our best to make this the classroom of both students, decision makers, kids, and all sorts of actors in, in the uh, educational system. What we want to do is reach every student in teacher education and social education, what we in Denmark call, call uh, pedagogues, or pedagoga. And the aim is to create learning environments all over Denmark that foster professionals capable to work with creativity, a breadth of skills, and playful learning. So what we do, and that's one of my final remarks, is uh, basically try to change it from the inside. And we try our best every day to create new pedagogical practices. We experiment with learning environments. We develop new educational cultures. We, we try to advise decision makers and innovate explorative learning designs with technology. I guess I've learned when I'm in Norway that Copenhagen is not that far away, so uh, please come and visit us. And of course, come and join our uh, workshop after the break. Because we live from inspiration. We live from inspiration also from 42 and all school, but also from speaking with you guys. And we have a lot of connections and we want more from Norway. Because I guess we have very, very similar challenges in both countries. So. My final remark is from one of our partners, Mitch Resnick from MIT Media Lab. And I think this statement is very important to me when we develop our future classroom lab. That creative thinking has always been and will always be a central part of what makes life worth living. Life as a creative thinker can bring not only economic rewards, but also joy, fulfillment, purpose, and meaning. And to me, it's all about the kids. It's all about that. Children deserve nothing less. See you at the workshop. Thank you.